A little bit of a delay getting it underway here, but I'll call the January 4th, 2023 <coughs> meeting of the Fire Station Building Committee to order. Um, we are meeting by Zoom only, so I'll take a roll call attendance. Uh, Tom Lindmark. Here. Justin Casanova Davis. Here. Aaron Kinney. Present. Present. All right, Aaron Hunt. Here. Ready jumped in. Chris Baker. Here. Justin Yanosek. Here. Evan Champagne here. All right, uh, the first agenda item is public comment. We do have a few people from the public on. Um, I don't know if anyone has a specific question or if you're just listening in to the meeting. So raise your hand or unmute yourself if you'd like to speak. Okay, I don't see any hands raised. Justin, do you? Nothing in the chat either, so I think we're all set. Okay. So we will go to the first discussion item, uh, discuss results of contractor bids. So uh, we received the general contractor bids on December 22nd. The bids come, did the low bid came back a little bit higher than our estimate, not by very much, but um, I think Steve, you, you want me to? You can probably yeah, present. Let me let break. me share my screen. Yep. Uh, let's see. So I think the big big picture here. Steve's going to run through it. Um, run through the updated budget using the actual contractor bid, um, and then we have the updated uh, debt exclusion amount. Now that amount we can um, kind of discuss a little bit here because there's obviously some contingency money that we could adjust. Uh, to bring the debt exclusion ass down. Um, but I'll let Steve kind of run the show here and walk everybody to get everybody up to speed. Yes, uh, thank you, Kevin. Just just to go over um, essentially <clears throat> what Kevin uh, started to review, we did get the general bid results on the 22nd. There were two bidders, <clears throat> both of which were had been pre-qualified um, during the, the contractor pre-qualification process. Uh, the base bid for the low uh, bidder, which is Constania Construction, was $20,177,000 with a credit of $47,000 if alternate one for the Arma Tough flooring was accepted. <clears throat> um, the uh, our, our Reconciled uh, CD60 estimated uh, budget was the 19,536,972. So we were we were roughly $640,000 over our our estimated uh, cost uh, for the base bid only. And if that uh, particular uh, alternate number one was accepted, we, it would actually reduce the amount that we we were over by by $47,000. Um, <clears throat> just sort of to continue on with, with Castagna, even though um, they were a pre-qualified general contractor uh, that we vetted uh, prior to, to bidding, I did call uh, get in touch with DCAM and got their DCAM file. Um, they, had a, they had a contractor number of 00114, uh, so they've been around for a while. Uh, so the 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 DCAM file um, had been um, updated and it really ran from uh, with eight files from 2017 to uh, 2022. Um, <clears throat> five of those uh, uh, DCAM evaluations were for public work, three of them for, were for private. Uh, they had an average score of 92. Um, we actually, uh, two, of, two of the projects that were listed and a third. Uh, Vertex has worked with Castagna in the past on uh, Littleton, Westford, and the West Natick fire stations. Uh, I, I got in touch with the project managers for those projects. They um, they had good things to say about C Castagna. Um, they're a small a small firm uh, that sort of uh, uh, concentrates on a couple jobs at a time. So um, it seems like. Uh, 
you know, reference wise uh, from within my own company, they, they got good references. So um, that sort of a recap of, of, of the bidding. Uh, that was the sheet that, that I had sent out after the bid. This is it's just simply the, um, the bid log that we got from um, Bid Docs Online who hosted the, the project, basically the same information. Any, um, any questions on Castagna uh, before I, I start into the, um, the budget? Just one quick thing, Steve, just for our audience that may be listening as well. That 92 score is based out of 100 or? It's, it's, based, it's based on 100. And with, with the DKIM evaluations, if you get, the contractor is, is given uh, a below an 80 score, that's, that's considered a, a failing score for, for DKIM. So, I mean, they, had, they ranged, they had, they had a, a low score of 82, but their range was really... You got 95s, 96, 97, 96, 90, 91. So most everything was was um, was in the um, or a good fair amount of it was in the upper 90s. As a matter of Thank fact, you. the the Natick project that that we were on, uh, we gave them a 91, and that was that was just recently finished in 22. Okay. So what I've done, and it's it's on multiple pages, and I'll just I'll just scroll through it. I mean, this was essentially maintaining the format of the budget that Ron had has presented in the past. I didn't want to change that because everybody was used to looking at it. I might want to maybe increase that a little bit. Um, so, but what I did is I've I, I sort of close up some of the columns that we we really don't need anymore that that are past estimates. I kept the CD60 estimate, which is what we had just before we went to bid. <clears throat> then uh, the, the middle column is essentially what our, um, our budget would be if, if we didn't make any, any real changes uh, or we didn't recommend any changes. And then the far right column is at least what I'm suggesting and is, is more for our discussion tonight to determine what we want to adjust and ultimately, what we want to um, what we want to have in our uh, town meeting uh, budget spreadsheet, and what the what the final ask is going to be. Uh, Steve, so the, sorry to jump in. Any chance you can zoom in a little bit page or something? <clears throat> Much better. Is that Thank better? You. That's yep. better. Thank you. Yeah, I, can, I, I mean it's right in front of me here on, on the screen, and I know it so. Yeah, just just let me know any questions. Just just stop me as I go through. Um, so the, so actually, the first adjustment, um, unfortunately, was adjustment on the on the OPM uh, cost. And and the reason behind that is we had been carrying the number for what was at one time a sixteen month duration of, of the project. That increased to an overall twenty one month, and two of those months being the procurement period where we will we won't have a clerk on on the site but there'll be there'll be project management and then uh, we have another 19 months from uh, the the start of construction through to the the final completion so there was there was additional months that I had to um, account for especially with having a a, a, a full-time clerk or a construction site manager on, on the site so there, there's, there's a delta there. Um, the insurance, which is really the builder's risk, stayed the same. We, um, that, that's sort of an estimate. We, we, once we have a general contract, that's really where uh, the insurance companies uh, will be able to give us a quote on, uh, on a builder's risk policy. Uh, legal fees, uh, we had been carrying 10,000, <clears> but I actually raised that. Um, and, and again, this the, the middle column is 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 what we had been uh, um, uh, a, a, an unchanged uh, uh, column of of numbers uh, based on the bids. The this column on the right is what I'm re recommending we make adjustments for. Um, 
so on the on the real far right, we we've already um, totaled eight thousand six hundred thirty dollars in legal fees. So I wanted to raise that amount by ten, just so we have have a good cushion. I, I, I'm not expecting that we're going to have a lot, but you you don't know what's going to happen in these projects. So I did raise that. Uh, the planning board fees remain the same. Right now with beta, we're up to $7,348. Um, and that was all uh, during the planning board review session. I did look at the uh, the uh, condition uh, that was issued with the, with the planning board approval. And they do have a review of certain documents by their, their third party consultant during construction. So, I, I want to leave that at 10,000 and we'd also carry 25,000 for site permitting costs. That uh, at one time I was looking to maybe reduce that, but I want to leave that as is because uh, I'm not sure what our, our total uh, costs are going to be with, uh, with beta during, during construction. Did not say that they had to be on site, but there was a number of, um, um, of the, uh, the, 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 contractors plans and procedures that that they want them to review steve i'm going to jump in again sorry these just to clarify these are all allowance numbers not bid numbers so in if we perform better there could be some fee left over at the end of the project Co correct Man, many of these are are placeholders i guess for lack of a better term but i don't want anything that was that's that we have hard contracts or, or purchase orders on those numbers are, are going to be there but certain things i want to make sure that we have enough room because i'm expecting uh, future costs right and, nope i got you i just wanted to clarify for everyone that these aren't bid numbers so there's the potential for savings i, I suppose it, it goes to say there's potential for overrun as well in these numbers there is, I mean, hopefully we will we'll be able to manage it enough that we're, we're we're coming under all of these numbers. And I mean, our ultimate goal is to be under the over uh, the total project budget when when the when the final day comes. But uh, we want we want to plan for um, uh, hopefully anything that that may or may not come up. And, and even your your amount there, the OPM line. Um, I know you mentioned that you have a, a breakdown you, that you could go through, but that's primarily clerk of the work costs, TNM costs, if the project Wait, goes to 21 months. Yeah, we, our, our, the OPM contract is not a lump sum contract. It is, it is a, it is an hourly. I can't say time and materials, we don't have any materials, but it's a time-based uh, contract. So whatever we expend on hours, that's what we charge, charge the project. Now that the clerk is pretty much solid at 40 hours provided we're not getting into weekend work and so forth right uh, my time varies a little bit i mean sometimes it's going to be eight hours for the week sometimes it may be 20 hours for the week but we we sort of figure it on an average and then we have the pluses and minuses as we go through the project okay sorry didn't mean to get you sidetracked no 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 that's so I said, you know, and, and, uh, break in with the questions as you have them, because it, it may be easier that way, because there's a little bit of uh, a few items here that we have to go through. Um, so um, there was also some Kadish uh, bills that were, were um, these are actually invoices that we had that for $5,355. I put those into site permitting fees because they were for some assistance in um, some of the site work uh, early on. Uh, power and utility, uh, probably not water, but certainly um, power um, uh, company back charges. That's that's for tying in our um, our primary power. We don't know whether they're going to charge the town for uh, the connection and the work that they may have to do in the street until we we actually get them. On, on the on the project I mean they're they've they've been involved in design but they never give it to us in advance so every project we carry thirty five forty thousand dollars for utility back charges again if we don't get charged anything then that that money comes back um, <clears throat> let's see existing tank inspections uh, that 16 it, we were carrying 2500 
Uh, I reduced that to 1615 because that was actually the bill that we got from Hockman. Um, advertising groundbreaking ribbon cutting, we're carrying uh, 10,000 straight through. We've, we've paid uh, $3,337 for various ads that needed to be uh, placed and some printing, the ads for, uh, uh, for our bidding um, requirements. Uh, <clears throat> ballot fees, we know that there's gonna be some, um, some fees for uh, running the ballot. Um, we had talked uh, previously about um, it being somewhat reduced because of the uh, uh, select board position election. I, I changed 8,000 to 4,000 um, just to carry that. Uh, I did also notice that um, there is some uh, fees for uh, the minutes for the uh, uh, the building committee meetings. They're about five hundred dollars a um, a meeting. Uh, I, so I plugged in a number for for that just based on um, essentially a, a meeting a month for two years. That may be something that can be uh, can be changed. But that was in our. I got the expenditures from from Todd, and, and those those costs came up. So that gives us um, for our site acquisition owner fees category. Uh, yeah, we were at uh, 12, uh, 12, uh, one, one million two hundred one thousand three eighty seven. I've with some adjustments, I've raised that to a million two twenty three seven fifty one. Uh, next category. Donna has some questions. Uh, it, as long as they're succinct and related to the budget, that. Okay. Um, so, the, I mean, the, we are out of public comment, but um, as long as it's kept succinct. The ballot fee, does that include running a town meeting and the, the uh, staff required for polls, running the polls? Um, wasn't quite sure why uh, there's money being spent for minutes. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, I'll tackle that real quick. Cause sure. I think a piece of that Donna, um, in terms of ballot fees, I've spoke with Carol and she's going to review to see what the costs are. Uh, there, There is a, a, a select board vacancy as well. That's all on, on the ballot. Um, so there's intent probably to look at maybe splitting costs, et cetera. So we're, I'm working with Carol to get uh, go through and understand what the, the costs are uh, in terms of running the election. Okay. And the, the cost for the minutes is related to the election or that's what's that 12,000? I imagine that's with Amanda running these meetings. I Correct. Have... Correct. Yeah, there was a there was a couple of um, uh, uh, minutes minutes for project um, cost in the uh, for October and December. So I just extended it. So that's a a cost the town has delivered to the project. It's been charged to the project by the town. Correct. She she's working for the fire station building committee on that when she does that. Meetings are after hours tend to be, so. Okay. Our, our site data collection, uh, a number of these are um, uh, amendments to Doran Whittier that we were basically placed into the uh, survey and um, information gathering um, category here. We had a, a original site survey that was that was an amendment 5,500. Geotechnical in investigations, 21,670. Um, Geotechnical uh, investigations post uh, concept approval, it's 10,862. Uh, hazmat bid documents and uh, future monitoring air sampling would be $32,747. Uh, there is a possibility that may be a, a NESAP inspection and testing requirement when the, when the demolition of the building 
happens, which is uh, is tied into EPA. Um, that was a recommendation from the hazmat consultant. We're going to carry that 8,500. Um, hopefully, we don't need it, but um, if we do, uh, we want to have that accounted for. And then also the possibility of a phase one site assessment, if that's necessary. That was um, that's a possibility. And then the acoustical survey, which is uh, also an amendment to Dorn Whittier, that was uh, seven thousand dollars. So that um, that category came in at eighty-eight thousand seven hundred seventy-nine. The architectural uh, slash engineering fees, this is all the Dorn Whittier and their sub-consultant fees. They had a feasibility study in $94,500. Um, we went over a few um, details on their, um, their other fees. And uh, I, there was there is something that is, is not gonna be billed that is being taken off. That's why we're seeing Little bit difference in the numbers on the on the fee services. Um, so ultimately, um, we're getting a, a an amount of a million nine hundred thirty three thousand one hundred twenty five. And then, so again, Steve, it, Steve, if I can just jump in there for a second, um, just so you all know, our contract, you know, was pretty specific on what we were going to do, and we allowed um, as an allowance. $15,000, right? Remember the existing septic system? Um, if that was unable to get permitted or needed to be expanded or needed to be built new, then we had that 15,000 in there for design um, for the septic system. And we did change the tanks out, but we didn't have to change the leach field and that's where the money was. So for that reason, we're not billing that 15,000 um because it wasn't needed after our investigations we decided as a team with the building committee that we wouldn't replace it um we are replacing the tanks i just want to make sure everybody realizes that and the piping so it's just the leach field that we're leaving in place um and that has been permitted so we're good to go um based on the extended ca schedule we were going to ask tonight if there's any um if we have the ability to just build that 15,000 as part of our extended CA. And we'll leave our contract basically in line with whatever was signed back in 2020, 2021 rather. Um, so that's just something for the committee to consider. Also, I did, I did add an amount of 5,000 for reimbursable costs because we have incurred some. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, mainly for printing um they were going to need wet sets for the uh, uh for the building department um i had it i originally had it in at ten thousand. i we i did cut it to five but but there you know the extension of the of the contract duration affected both us and and door and for their ca so is the ask for the additional money for the extended ca resulting in the one the one million nine thirty three one twenty five versus the one million nine fifteen six twenty five. No, we. I think we'd no. have to add the fifteen thousand to the one nine thirty three one twenty five. Right. I took it out already on my um, when Ron and I had a conversation by email today. Yeah, and I had I had just clarified with him that we wouldn't be billing that for the septic, but then after reviewing the extended CA. You know, we're thinking, well, let's just categorize that as extended CA. We won't ask for any more. And now it's back to the basic contract amount that we originally started with. And then we would cover the extended period of time within that. We could go back to the 1944. Right. But, but what, where's the adjustment from 1944 from 1915? Is that the amendments that were approved to date? Because I think some of those amendments were in the site data above, right? Yeah, the none, there's no amendments in here. I, I think the 1915, there was, I think there may have been an error in that, that something was missed. Yeah, I think the 1944725 is the correct number, but I'd have to, I did send an email earlier today, and I think, Kevin, I copied you on it, and Justin um yeah I, was, I honestly didn't get a chance to read it before oh, that's okay that's okay all, all it 
all it is like I attached our contract to it, right? <laughs> so all it is is a is just a, a summary of the amounts that are in the contract. So you can look at the email or the contract and yeah. add it. And all again, up. and again, that one nine four four also has um, uh, five thousand for reimbursables in it. So that is not shown in going with his contract. Okay. I can, I, I mean, I can, I can uh, recap that for you if you want, Kevin, after just to, to clarify. No, yeah, sort of on top of Ron's email. Sure. And Justin, I don't know if you or Amanda can just go back through the, the contract numbers and just make sure that they align. Yeah, I'm going to read through it. I had a meeting this afternoon, so I didn't get sure. to read your email, Ron. So I'll, I'll look through this. Okay. Yeah, his, his the document Ron sent has has all the numbers on it starting. Well, it was it was the numbers starting after feasibility study. So you you do have to you have to start with ninety four five and then add that um, that amendment. So, okay. Believe me, I've looked at it quite a few times. So <laughs> sure. Okay. So I think we should be. I think we should be good there. <clears throat> so that's that's. So we're going to be making a little adjustment in there. So it looks like we're probably at two million one twenty four two twenty five. Uh, independent uh, consultants. Um, at the end of the day, there's a lot of categories there, but we really we came down to the HVAC commissioning agent and the building envelope commissioning agent. We had carried a uh, hundred thousand dollars. The HVAC came in at 47,240. The envelope uh, came in at 79,750. Uh, we did have conversations on both of these during previous building committees, and uh, it was deemed that we want the building envelope uh, at the higher amount. So uh, that number now comes in at 126,990. And that, that, that's through Vertex, which actually, Kevin, I realized that I, I have to send an amendment for just to for paperwork wise, but it's already been approved. Okay. Um, and that's not, that's not, I've taken that out. That's not included in the OPM fee in the upper uh, section that we went over already. I kept it, I kept it here. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, now uh, furnishings, equipment and technology. Uh, we've been carrying $300,000 all along. We didn't really touch that. Um, the audiovisual equipment and systems, we had originally carried $65,000. Um, we did get a, uh, a written quote from ProAV a few months back based on our visit there and our review of, of um, some of the components that was came in at $109,000. So in this case, I did raise uh, our, our budget to 100,000. Uh, you know, hopefully we can we can get that nine thousand uh, off of something. But I think that uh, if we want, if we're going to do this once, we want to do the audiovisual right the first time. Um, so I, I thought it was was um, prudent to raise that amount to to get closer to uh, what we had as a as an estimate from a uh, audiovisual firm. Um, and just so everybody knows that will be it will be publicly bid um it's just what just like any door supplier window supplier anything like that when we're designing something we have to work with them to do two things right to budget what the products cost and to make sure it's detailed properly um and so we just picked a company that the chief and some of his uh staff members were able to go visit and actually see the technology that we're talking about so they know exactly um, what it is they want and how they want to do it. And then we asked them for a budget and they gave us a budget. So that yeah, 109,000 yeah. is essentially a budget, but this will be bid. Um, and I think that's why Steve is saying, you know, let's just carry a hundred thousand. Yeah, because we the intention is go through the OSD state bid list because they, these all those vendors are, you know, including the one we, we talked to are established under that, that state contract and Virtually all of the uh, municipalities um, take advantage of those uh, blanket uh, agreements that um, contain discounts. 
Uh, the next item uh, was radio communications equipment. Um, we had been carrying $100,000 for that. I know that the chief said if push came to shove um, and we needed to take that off, he, he would be okay with it. You know, and if we certainly, as, as we move through the, the, through, the, through the project and we're seeing that we have contingency monies left, it's something that um, he can come back and, and, and uh, look into purchasing uh, partially later. Uh, I don't know, Chief, if you want to talk a little bit about the actual components. I mean, these aren't, you know, you still have your radios that you have now, but this was um, this is something a little bit more. Yeah, we were just looking at uh, potentially, well, we need to upgrade our uh, repeater site. And, um, you know, a lot of that uh, switch and the motor and stuff are currently housed in the station. Um, so we would be looking to, we were looking to try to upgrade that with the, the changes that Satan was doing in our building. But again, that's not something that we have to carry, you know, uh, in, in this, you know, push comes to shove. And actually, you know, we're, we're looking at, and we proposed other means. We were denied. We looked for a state earmark to handle it and it didn't come to fruition, but it's not going to stop us from doing it again. So. Uh, plus, our microwave is being upgraded through a grant that Tan got anyway, which is going to take care of some of the uh, redundancy needs that we have, uh, which is which is good. That's good news. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, next we come down to the uh, uh, the alerting station alerting system. We've been carrying fifty thousand for that. Um, we did have the green screen energy dashboard and a digital display screens that um, we had uh, sort of small dollars, 11,000, but zero those out, those can, those can probably um, be accounted for up in the $300,000 for furniture and equipment. Um, administrative- they were, they were actually part of the budget for the AV equipment. That's right, I'm sorry, that's right. Um, and then the- uh, ad administration equipment, copiers, uh, CPUs and so forth. We, we are carrying 35,000 for that. Uh, phone system, the existing phone uh, system uh, is relocation only. Uh, we're not buying a new, new system itself um, per our conversation with Tan. And uh, IT equipment and wireless access equipment. Uh, uh, total, we, we've been carrying 125. Uh, we have not, are not, not looking to change that. Uh, relocation budget. Originally, we were carrying $75,000 for uh, relocating equipment and you know, whatever furnishings are going to stay, files and so forth. Basically, the move. Uh, a number of items um, that are being moved that are equipment-wise are now in the contract for the contractor to move. Um, so I, I'm, yeah, there, there's still moving that needs to be done. So I'm suggesting we reduce this from 75 to 50. And that would um, bring our subtotal uh, from uh, originally from 781 to 680, um, giving us a total on the soft cost for my, what I'm recommending, our, our far right column of 4,232,145. Um, we were, have been always carrying a 5% soft cost contingency. So that's just 5% of that amount. In this case, 211,607. We scroll down to the next page. Essentially, this is where we're getting into our, our hard costs and our, um, some of our construction contingencies. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Again, our, our, our low bid our contract, the base bid, came in at $20,177,000. Um, there was alternate number one for the Armatuff uh, PVC or uh, recycled PVC flooring, which is actually a credit of $47,000. So as we're looking at, at this column, I'm actually, and, and we, we do have to discuss the alternate in, in a little bit more detail, but just for numbers sake, I am taking that, that alternate so that it reduces the overall 
Uh, construction contingency, which we're counting at 5%. I've left that on 5% of the base bid, which is just over a million dollars. Uh, we had originally been carrying a 2.85% owner contingency. I've reduced that in our, in our far right column from 2.85% to 1%. That would be an area of savings. Um, so hey, that, is, there, is there a reason why it was reduced to 1%? At just, at, as, a, as a matter of, of offsetting some of the costs that, that are over. We have, we have three contingencies right now on this project. We have a soft cost contingency of 211. Uh, we have a essentially a hard cost construction contingency of just over a million. And then we have this owner of an, another $200,000. So I think a, essentially a $1.4 million contingency which I mean, we're not locked into where I'm placing it as far as a category. <laughs> it's it's it gives us a good uh, good buffer. <laughs> Excuse well, me. I mean, uh, well, I guess we could keep talking about that, right? I mean, the owner contingencies really are design contingency through <laughs> design. Design is complete, so there's reasons to reduce that, right? Our construction contingencies, contingencies, the contingency that we designated to get us through construction. So that's still there and we're holding. Correct. So, so the concept of reducing the owner contingency seems reasonable um, to cover some of these pluses and minuses that we're talking about, but keeping a little bit in our pocket uh, for potential change seems to make sense too, right? So. I think I think what I'm rambling on here, Steve, is I'm I'm generally agreeing with your logic. And just yeah, and just to be be clear, I know we've talked about this before, but for anybody listening in, that now that that contingency money is is the town's money, right, to to cover things like what's happening right now. Um, if we don't spend that contingency money, that that can be applied against the the debt, Todd, or or we just or we don't apply basically. for the debt until yeah we don't apply for the debt until the project is done. Not That's in yes, the, yeah, the, the latter. So either way, if we don't use the contingency money, we're not paying for it as debt. Comes off the books, right? Yep. Right. Okay. There's no reason we have to spend every dollar if we don't have, yep. have to. Yep. My, my concern is about some suspenders kind of guy is I'm always worried about, you know, those contingencies that do come up to play, the unknowns, the, the hazards, all the things that are going to come up to fruition when we actually do get into construction, you know, uh, tearing down the old building, what are we going to run into? Uh, digging up for the new building, what are we going to run into? Those kinds of issues. So obviously, you know, making sure that we do have enough in con contingency is my concern. Yep. I'm just more conservative, that's all. So, so if we add up, let, let, let's assume we go with your recommendation here, Stephen, I know that we need to confirm that, but if we add up these two contingencies and the soft cost contingency, what is that as a percent of the, of the, the project cost and how does that compare to other new build projects? Well, I think we're, we're consistent with <clears throat> With other new build projects, because uh, generally, rule of thumb on new construction is five percent construction contingency. If we were doing a renovation; uh, we'd be more leaning towards a ten percent because there's there's more more issues that could be unknown when you're when you're tearing a building apart and and gutting it and 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 reusing it. So we're we're maintaining that five percent construction contingency. We're also maintaining that five percent soft cost contingency. Um, you know, the only thing that's really, we really dropped down a little bit. And, you know, like I said, we could consider this design contingency, but we're calling it owner contingency. We revise that down to 1% of the, um, of the construction cost. And we're basing it on the construction cost at this point. Yeah. Right. So we have like 1.5 million in straight contingencies, right? right? Plus, plus we have some buckets of money we've identified for the demolition, like for hazmat and stuff, right? We've done a lot of upfront work. We've identified some hazmat, so we own some hazmat. 
but we're we're we carrying some contingency we're carrying con some contingency monies for hazmat that isn't identified yet right so i mean i think uh, we've had this contingency conversation a couple times i think we're pretty well covered i fully understand todd's point of why not keep the money to be conservative so it's really going to come down to uh you know do we want to do we want to lower the contingency the owner contingency that we've been carrying to accommodate these pluses and minuses that have happened over the course of planning the project. And, and I'd argue that's what it's there for, uh, to try and keep the number down, the number that we're voting on as close to the number that we estimated it at as, as possible. Yeah, I mean, you know, th things, we, we can talk about raising and lower, lowering things tonight, it, you know, then that's sort of the, the idea for tonight. I mean, <clears throat> what, what are our, what are our, I think our concerns basically on on latent conditions. It's going to be stuff that's underground or stuff that we find in the building when we demolish the building. I mean, the new construction, you know, Ron and his team have vetted that to death. I mean, it, you know, for all intents and purposes, that that should that should go up pretty pretty smoothly. I mean, um, it's on any project. It's it's what you don't know. I mean. You know, we certainly know that ledge is there, so that that's that's being accounted for as much as we can. Um, but you know, I think I think those are our obviously our concerns um, that we don't know everything, and it's just because we can't see it yet. And just I just want to add to that, if I might, um, we have done some selective demo inside the existing station. Um, another reason to go forward with the project uh so some of those things like for instance the mastics that you typically run into that are sort of unforeseen um we actually broke through some walls um with our hvac i mean our hazmat consultant and you know they did a pretty good job of trying to find everything that they could find i think aaron's 100 percent correct right there's always going to be something and todd you know that right from your experience that you know, you dig in, you find something. Um, but for the most part, what we tried to do um, was identify as much as we can. In addition to that, we have the monies in the project budget to have the hygienist who's working for you, the town, have the hygienist on site during the demolition and during the abatement. So there shouldn't be any kind of quote unquote downtime. Oh, we found this. We don't know what to do with it. There'll be somebody there on behalf of the town telling them exactly what to do with it in accordance with DEP regulations. So if we continue on, I mean, obviously we have a line item here for you know utility rebates and so forth. That's nothing that's going to to be known or occur until the the project is done. So if if there are anything from mass saves that you know we've obviously been pursuing, but we we really don't know, that will be at the end of the project and will just basically help offset the cost. Uh, construction inspection and testing obviously that's something that we have to do we'll hire a a fenner or a um, U, U, uh, uts or someone like that to do the uh third party inspections of soil compaction concrete strength uh, slump tests and so forth uh, during construction uh that brings us down to uh again i'm, I'm right now i'm working off the, the far right uh, a total project budget at uh, 25, 824, 372, less the 3.3 million <clears throat> that's uh, funds in hand. That brings us down to $22,524,372, which would be the ask at the special town meeting. If we go back to the center column. If we didn't take some of these uh, reductions and, and so forth, we'd be just over 23, which we really, we, we, don't, we don't wanna be there. Um, so, and I have TBD next to that number only because, you know, as part of the discussion we just had, maybe some, some of these numbers want to be adjusted. Maybe we're not going to take the alternate and we may want to look at how we, how we offset that. In that, in, in that case, the, the alternate is actually a credit. So it takes money off the project. That's, that's a, a discussion we probably should have tonight because I think Ultimately, we want to finish off our our uh, budget slide for um, special town meeting next week. Yeah, I, the the ones I wrote down here is 
we, we need to talk about um, the architectural fee as far as Ron's request for the $15,000, knowing that that Justin still needs to vet the overall number, but get that updated if we're going to accept that. Determine if we're going to accept this alternate number one, and then if we're going to adjust any contingencies, right? Because I, right. I think tonight we need to we need to come up with what this final number is, because we've basically said we're going to have that at town meeting. Correct. So, um, so that that's that's the uh, that's the just, bottom up. Just just so sure. I think I know the answer to this already. It's probably to Justin or, or Todd. So whatever that that bottom line number is, say it's the twenty two million five twenty four. And that's the debt exclusion. So basically what the town is voting is a, a not to exceed debt exclusion amount, correct? Because then we won't actually get take on the debt until the project is done and we know what contingencies were expended and so on. So that... there's there's two votes. The first is a town meeting vote. Yeah. That's what they're gonna vote on as far as the number for the debt exclusion. So we're gonna provide them it's not you don't ever say not to exceed we're going to provide them that we're going to uh, go for bond of 22 six and change whatever the number is yep um that we you know kind of come up with um obviously you know justin and myself and the select board have to figure out you know exactly how we want to kind of structure that going forward but to give people an impact cost we'd have to know kind of what that number is um sure. and, and currently because you know as the construction goes on i take in bands pay for the, the uh, services throughout the time. Once the construction is done and I have a total number, that's when I'll go and get the uh, bond amounts. Um, and then the vote, which is gonna be at the end of the month, that's just uh, to um, accept going for the uh, debt itself. Not, it's not based on a number. It's just whether or not they wanna move forward with um, doing the debt, two-step process. Okay, Un understood. I, I guess what I was asking is, so when we do the Let's say it's twenty two six just for a round number. That's what we vote on at town meeting. We can't exceed twenty two six in construction without going to another town meeting, correct? but the debt but the 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 final debt load could be less than twenty two six correct yeah okay. and again, that's that's the reason about my belts and suspenders of contingencies to make sure that we don't have to go back and ask again, even though. I realize you know the drop of the 2.85 to the one percent still allows us that flexibility, but going from other projects that and I'm talking smaller projects too, you you run into whatever all of a sudden you had another uh, another seven thousand dollars for an acoustic study that wasn't anticipated or or what have you. I'm just saying, sure, sure. You run into numbers and they can add up pretty quickly. That's all. Todd, Todd, I got a question for you. I just I just flipped up to the the top of the of the budget sheet. We've been carrying. Seventy thousand dollars for financing costs. Is that is that a good number? Uh, was probably a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not sure what the number is going to be exactly. I'd have to um, touch base with my finance people uh, to see where we're at now. Because obviously uh, they've been doing some bonding, and I can get some um, numbers the next day or so um, mm -hmm. and get back to you on that. You know, okay. The, the last bonding that we did was for the public safety, which was at $10 million or a little bit less because um, it was 14 overall, but we had to do it in two tranches. And um, one of the tranches was close to like 58,000. That was at a smaller amount though. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking it's probably really gonna be more, but I'm not sure exactly how much more. I'd have to get back to you on that. I think that maybe Kevin, that's something we wanna we want to know too then yeah i think i think we need to to agree on the unless there's others that we need to talk about i think we need to agree on the three that we have and then hopefully that seventy thousand dollars isn't too far off and maybe the number can be you know I don't know how we, if we need to vote well, on the number. Let's not get ahead of ourselves there though, right, Kevin? I mean, it, we'll find out what the number is and we'll have the conversation, right? I mean, if the only option we would have tonight is if we want to vote on a final number, we could say whatever the number is above 70,000, take it out of the owner contingency. Sure, yep. Right. Yep. Or or you <laughs> could vote in a number 
plus the difference that Todd comes up with, right? So whatever Todd comes up with in terms of a difference between 70,000 and what the number is, whatever you vote on tonight, your vote includes that number plus the difference. This way here, Kevin, I think you get what you want, right? Which is to leave this meeting with the number so that Todd can go do his magic with Justin and come up with what it means to the taxpayers and everybody in town. And we can finish off the PowerPoint presentation with exact numbers um, of what everything is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm, I was just thinking that we're not really going to meet again. I guess, I mean, we could, but we're right. not going to meet again until we huddle up probably just before town meeting. So we probably should get the number tonight. As best and I can. emailed my financial director. So I should have an answer back to probably tomorrow. Okay. okay. All right. And then <clears throat> just... I mean, what I've, I know it was, it's, it's in the, um, the presentation, I think that was, was issued uh, before the meeting, but I've, I've sort of updated this a little bit, somewhat match what I, I was just showing. This, this would be our slide at um, special town meeting. And, you know, I sort of, we talked about, you know, moving this up to this line and, and making some changes there to show the, uh, cost per square foot, the average square foot, but these would just be the numbers to sort of coincide with, you know, the roll up um, summary of, of what, what we just went through. And if we're making some minor modifications, we can, we can adjust those so that, uh, you know, Ron can plug that into his, his latest version or his, or his next version of the, uh, the presentation. So I only have one adjustment, which would be on the very last item, which says total appropriation to the town. If we could maybe put additional appropriation or sorry, I, I had this as total appropriation request to the town, but we can write whatever you want, Todd. Total additional appropriation because we've already appropriated 3.3. .3, so okay. Yep. That, so. Additional appropriation to the town? Additional appropriation request? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It, is it worth giving a round number for this to say like 22700 and then putting whatever the difference is into one of the contingencies as a or is it better to come out with an exact dollar amount at the town meeting i would prefer rounding up myself yeah we can do that that's like yeah. i'm just saying if we say like 22750 that and just put that difference into one of the contingencies that should hopefully provide all the buffers everyone's concerned with without saying that you know making it a, a outrageously high cost yeah i i, I mean my gut says it, the original the original amount was about 22.1 right i think if we're at 22.6 or 22.5 or 22.7 yeah we were 20 22076 was yeah i was I, 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 I was rounding yeah but, but um, i'd be happy at 22.7 yeah I, I think I guess, 22 but, seven yeah, seems reasonable. My, my yeah, and my, I can put that back into the owner's contingency if that's where you want to. Well, let's just talk about the the architectural and the armor tough first. Okay. And, yeah. And yeah. Just yeah, because yeah, because this these numbers are based on taking that that alternate. So uh, we really need to make that to discuss that as to whether that alternate is going to be accepted or rejected. Yeah. Yeah, because Justin, I, I agree with you. I think if it's 22.7, and if someone was for the project at 22.1, I don't think 22.7 is going to make a difference to them. And if someone was against it, they're still going to be against it. You know, so um, that's my opinion. I don't know how everybody else feels, but most likely. Me, I'd go 23, but that's just me. I'm conservative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. I, I realize that the difference between 23 and 22.7 is is not all that big, but I think it looks different. You know. So you want 22 nine 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 nine? We all know that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so can we? Uh, do you mind going back to the other sheet then? I mean, the the architectural to fee to oh, me. Wait. Where do you want to go to, Kevin? Uh, our, I just had the architectural fee written down first. 
the fifteen thousand dollars, considering a, a five month construction extension, to me seems reasonable. I don't know what anybody else thinks. Where the where the five month extension come from? So it was a couple of things. Um, as yeah. we started designing the project, uh, one thing that came into fruition was the idea that we needed the procurement for the generator and the Eversource transformer is just going to take longer than we anticipated. So we actually have designed the project to get built around the existing transformer to stay in place. Um, but they're going to need some time towards the end of the job to actually get that transformer, well, get the permanent power transformer in during the project and then get the generator up and running for testing because our life safety systems are on the generator. So, and, and right now generators are running 13 months out um, and so are the transformers. Um, and so what we're able to do is instead of giving the contract to the contractor well, we are, I mean, that, that still remains the same, right? So we have the contract that we were going to sign up with the contractor on February 3rd. We're still doing that. Um, but now instead of them occupying the site on February 3rd, we actually have them occupying the site on April, in April, so that they're yeah, not- Yeah, we them two months, yep. roughly. And what they can do in those two months is order all the electrical equipment, which includes the main distribution panels and so forth, which also have- you know, incredible lead times right now. Um, and they're going to be able to submit all of that information. They can buy it and procure it and then get that to the site. Um, so they have it in time. And then towards the end of the project, now that we know what we're doing for green buffers and such, instead of finishing the project on August 1st, we're actually finishing the project on October 30th. So the contractor has the ability to have that planting season in the fall to make sure that everything gets planted and actually lives um, because what we don't have here is an irrigation system. So we want to give the contractor time to get those plants in and actually get them established uh, before. Right. So we've really added no scope to the project. It's just time. So it's just time. Right. So and it's really three, it's three months of, of actual on-site time, two months of essentially paperwork submittals, uh, approvals of submittals, and then re, you know the contractor or file submit is releasing, like Ron said, generator uh, purchase, uh, switch gear purchase, uh, and handling unit purchases, anything that's that's in that supply chain long lead time category. Which you know there's there's, there's a few right, things. But, you know, but it's just things. displacing the two months from where it was in a smaller amount to filling time to while we're waiting for a generator. So. I mean, can't we stretch the fee that we had for the original scope, just like the schedule got stretched to, to wait for the generator? Well, I think it's more than that, right? Because we're yeah. going to be having management meetings. I mean, they're starting on the project. So I fully expect them to take advantage of this and, you know, submit everything that they can submit sooner rather than later. And then during the project, um, you know, during construction, we really shouldn't be continuing to review submittals, although we always do. Um, and then they drag towards the end of the project, right? They have the time, uh, they are working, we're still doing site visits, we're still doing inspections and punch lists and so forth. So I would suspect that they're gonna take advantage of that, meaning the contractor um, and be expeditious as they can be, which means we also have to match that effort. So yeah, it's not- gonna be no I doubt. Make it, yeah, I don't wanna make why, it- sound, why, do, why do we have to match that effort? because we always want to stay ahead of the contractor. We don't want to give them a reason to say we're, we're delaying them because we haven't acted on a submittal or a application for payment or, or something of that such. But again, the number of submittals and hasn't changed. It's just the time that they come in has changed, right? So if there's a hundred submittals on the project with us, with a, a year schedule, there's a hundred submittals with a year and six months. And right, you're just, you're just taking six more months to do the work. But that extra six months is also project meetings, um, right. site reports. Uh, you know, you're administrating the construction for another six months. You're reviewing another six applications for payment. You're going through all of the uh, paperwork that needs to get done from payments to schedules to questions that come up. Um, you know, I mean, we 
the project remains the same. You're correct. But when you stretch out the duration, it just changes the effort that needs to go into it. Uh, as a better example might be the contractor. If he had a shorter duration, is going to have he's going to throw more people at the project to try to get it all done within that time frame. When he has a longer extended schedule, he doesn't have to have people working on top of one another. So I think that, you know, there is a time aspect mm -hmm. of it. And that's why, you know, we understand the, the project and, and we're not basically saying, okay, we had 16 or 17 months into our CA fee, divide that. It's much more than $5,000 a month. You know, and what we're thinking is let's just, you know, if it's okay with everybody, we'll just accept the 15000 that we didn't bill for for the septic system to cover those costs, and then we'll absorb the rest of it. Because we don't want to, you know, increase the basic services that's already signed off and that the town has. I mean, I, me personally, I think that's reasonable. Like, you're clearly demonstrating a concern for the budget of the project. I'm not sure what the your monthly fee would be, but I, I was thinking it was probably more than the $5,000 as well. It's already budgeted there. I think it's a, it doesn't seem like that difficult of an ask to me. That's just what my thought process is. Is, is the, is the 21 months in the contract yes. for, for the contractor? So it, like he can't come back and say, it's going to take me 23 months and now we're back to square one. No, he's, the he, he could say that. And then we say, well, then you're going to be charged liquidated damages for that month, but you okay. can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, but we um, just just so everybody knows um, what the contract requires, it has a completion date and it has a commencement date. So they have between that February 3rd date and October 30th to be 100% complete. Um, then there are phasing dates in between that and there are enabling dates and logistic dates that they need to meet, um, which will become part of their critical path because those will be milestones on the on the project schedule. Um, but as Steve said, they are required to finish by October 30th. They don't have an open-ended schedule. And, and that's final completion. The really liquidated damages start at substantial completion. So, um, and, you know, obviously we have a, we have a, one of the milestones is a move-in date because we have to vacate the existing fire station in order to allow them to start the demolition, abatement and the demolition. So that's all outlined you know, without giving them a day-to-day -day type of schedule, we've given them those milestone dates as as part of the of the uh, the contract documents. Yeah, I, I mean, I I felt fifteen thousand seemed reasonable for, like I said, five months. I, I mean, I I hear what Aaron's saying that it's the same amount of work, but I think there is some. Uh, the 15,000 is one question, the 150,000 is a second. Right. Yeah, well, the 150,000, um, Steve, do you want to go through your, I know you have a breakdown of how that was developed. Yes, I, I do. And and the, the 802 was, was basically a 16 month duration that we were carrying from really uh, December of 21, which which should have been updated and, and it just wasn't. Uh, what I've done, I can show you. So, well, here's, here's the, here's what the breakdown would be right now. Our contract has uh, a feasibility study cost, schematic design, design development, construction documents, and bidding was the first amendment we received, which brings us to $190,000 uh, for our OPM services contract. Um, the construction administration and closeout, which is contingent upon the uh, special town meeting vote would be in addition, uh, in addition to that. Um, what, how we figure our our budget, and again, I say budget as a, as really as opposed to fee because it's it's not a lump sum. And this is part of a much larger spreadsheet that had the other categories of feasibility study, um, DD, <coughs> and, uh, CD, and 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 bidding in it. I took the basically the construction and and closeout. 
Um, and I broke it up because we do have costs uh, on duration in 2023 and then duration in 2024, which there are different rates. So I, I broke it into, uh, you know, project manager uh, costs for, you know, the entire project because as a PM, I'm going to be working on not only the 19 month construction period, but also the two month procurement period, which is our 21 months. So um, the, the, the project executive is John Lemieux, who touch, touches base on the project um, at, as, you know, during its its progress um, and has been. The senior PM, which is my costs, are here and is based on uh, 12 hours a week times the, the, the number of weeks for 2023 and 2024 gives us a, a total. Then the on-site uh, clerk services, which does not start until uh, the first two months are, are up because I, I don't need uh, the clerk on the site when nothing's going on. And that was that was part of the, the idea behind the procurement period is that we're not incurring some of the general conditions costs either from us or from the general contractor. <clears throat> so uh, on site, he's got 39 weeks in 23, 43 weeks in 24. That brings us to the end of October. Um, in, on some projects, we uh, we have closeout as a, as a separate line item, but it's using the same rate. So I put everything up into the up into the uh, uh, one uh, one one a two two a category, um, and then you know sort of as as a standalone, you're going to have to uh, have some time to prep and attend building committee meetings. This is something that that Kevin brought up. I I I was carrying two meetings a month, but we may in actuality and and most likely, which is the norm, only do one building committee meeting a month. But there may be other meetings that, that we have as we go through the project. But I could I could essentially take one of these off, which would cut the cut the price by about twenty five thousand, twenty six thousand um, dollars. If if and I, I I would assume the consensus would be it's it's a monthly committee meeting, correct? During construction. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I, I'm not really sure. I know we've been doing two per month just because there's been so much prep to get ready for this town meeting. Well, going to construction, the, the main, you know, the main the main idea for a monthly meeting is to to coordinate it for uh, you know essentially invoices, uh, especially application for payment for approval of of the contractor's monthly. Uh, monthly yeah, invoice and, and we're paying for a clerk of the works to keep track of the work on a daily basis so i mean i would think once a month for the building committee is fine yeah and then i'll you know i'll have some kind of presentation that will you know have uh you know what the progress is uh during the during the month that uh we were working from between the between the meetings so that um committee members can can see what's going on um without necessarily having to to go there and, and do a tour and whatever, you know, review uh, PCOs, review progress, review problem issues, uh, review um, review invoices and anything else that, that may come up during the project. So that that will be, I mean, that, that's our that's normally our our um, procedure for a for a building committee meeting. Um, you know, uh, you know, OPM will attend, the architect will attend, and the committee will attend and any guests that you may want. I have a question here on the cost of the clerk of the works. On the previous sheet, what was itemized on the uh, the new budget, I guess, it says it's $120,000 annually for the clerk of the works. And this seems like it's more approaching $300,000 annually. So I know that 120 has been there right, al right along and I'm assuming you use that base document for a lot of things. They probably should be more in line with each other. Yeah, this, this, Oh, uh, which document are you talking about? Keep going up a little bit higher. Yeah, he's, he's talking about my uh, spreadsheet. And oh, I, oh. I mean, 120 is probably from years ago. Yeah, I just think like, <laughs> yeah, I, that I one right there. It costs more, but that, like, you know, that, that's a drastic difference there. So I saw that 120, like, that uh, seems reasonable to me for a clerk of the works to make 120, but for a clerk of the works to make 300,000, eh, like, that seems like a little bit of a stretch. But I get it. There's more. You have to get your 
you guys have to get paid as well. Well, he's an employee of Vertex, so it, he, that's not going into his pocket. We have no. all the labor burden just like everybody else does. Of course. Yeah, I understand. I just think that the difference in the numbers is rather large. Yeah. Um, well, that, that, that's an architect's number for an OPM. <laughs> what he thinks you're worth. Um, yeah, really. the, the, um, if we go up one slide, Steve, where you have your feasibility costs. So like, I know you guys didn't expend your entire feasibility study amount. And, and I'm assuming once we're through bidding, like that 19378 becomes a real number that's smaller. I, I checked our, our billing through through November 30th was was one hundred and forty one thousand dollars. We 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 were way under in, in the in the bidding. I, I think um, our our pre qualification costs were ended up being a little bit more than we expected. But um, but we you know we, we're still we're still we're still close. We're still in, in our range. But um, you know there's there's still we still got essentially the month of of December and, and obviously part of January because we're we're I guess technically we're still in in bidding. We don't switch over until we get approval of of um, the project and then we're at that point we're into CA. And what have you been spending per month roughly? So if you're saying that's one closer to one forty one, I mean it's fifty thousand dollars. I'm just yeah. I, I know this. It's all T and M. I'm just I'm just saying like. Yeah, some of it. Some of it will probably drop down and and, and be available for the uh, uh, for the CA. Uh, you know, we we never intend to try and and um, spend everything that that we we budgeted. I again, our budget, we we try and make it so that we're not coming back to and saying, "Hey, I need more money." Yeah, I I I, I think with that, especially in mind, it's probably justified going down to one meeting, because even if we have to put some additional meetings in there. You've still I, got some money left over. I can, yeah, I can probably, I can probably cover that um, as we go along. I mean, it, it you know, it, 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 there's always more meetings, um, but you know, it, there's going to be a lot of meetings during the project, anyways. But uh, you know, I was sort of, in particular, there's there's a, a little bit of prep for a, a committee meeting. But if we if we're going to go down to one, then I can I can certainly take reduce that amount. Um, by roughly uh, roughly twenty six thousand. Yeah, I, I think just to make the number a little more realistic. Yeah, I, it's I about, understand it's all just a budget, but um, I don't want to show our owner contingency necessarily a lot lower if, if than it needs to be. Yep, I can make that change. <clears throat> Any other questions on vertex fees? Okay. Um, so, Justin Casanova Davis, do, do we have to, if, if we're going to change the line item of the architect's fee on this sheet, do we need to? officially vote on that or would we vote on it i i guess we're not really changing the the amount right because we're taking the fifteen thousand that's already been approved and just moving it from what i'm saying yeah no I, I don't think you would have to because it's just uh, continuing with what you had initially um i i think we should talk about this you know after as i dive through it because i am looking at the contract but you know, if the board voted or the committee voted on this number previously, you don't have to do anything further. Okay. So I, I would say let, let's, a, let, unless someone disagrees, certainly speak up, but let's just adjust in the third column here. Cause I think we're basically working in the third column here now. Let's Correct. just, let's just adjust Dorn Whittier's number for that 15,000. This is a PDF, so I I, I can oh. do it on an Excel sheet. Okay. Um, as we as we continue on with the meeting, because I know we're probably going to go 
Are you going to start reviewing the other slides at this point? Yeah, we, we do need to. <laughs> it's we're already an hour and a half in here. So um, why don't I stop sharing and maybe well, I can make some of the corrections and then we can put it back up on the, uh, on the well, screen. Do we, do we need to talk about the armor tough as well? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I, I, I want to get to the slides, too, but um, let's just because then I think you can you can make the adjustment to, to get it to, you know, I think we talked about 22.7 and see where that leaves the owner's contingency at with these couple of adjustments. Right. With the, yeah, the OPM adjustment, the architect adjustment. And then, so so the armor tough, um, I so guess, to, yeah, you, you can give, I mean, Ron kind of filled me in a little bit on it, but Ron, you're probably better to. So we have an epoxy floor specified um, for the apparatus bays that goes into the adjoining rooms. Uh, the epoxy floor is a tried and true material. Um, the armor tough is a product that the chief made us aware of. We had never used it before. Um, we looked into it. It looked like a good viable product. Um, and then, you know, the chief has had good experience with it um, on a prior project. Um, we then went to visit it at another project and it had water damage, um, which, you know, nobody could really convincingly say whether the water damage was due to putting this floor into an existing station that may not have had the right kind of concrete prep, or if it's just the Amatuff being susceptible to, you know, the weather, um, the salt, the water, and so forth. Um, in addition to that, the armor tough is a PVC product. It is made out of recycled PVC, but the manufacturer of PVC, we all know the environmental impacts that that has. So we left it on as an alternate for three reasons. Um, one, the salesman for armor tough had been telling us as a, as a group, you know, the working group meeting with the fire department and chief that it would save a ton of money. So there you have it. Um, the ton of money is $47,000. Um, and keep in mind that the other contractor, who's the second low bidder, his credit was $10,000. So you never really know what the value of these products are when people are trying to get the job. Um, so for that reason, you know, and I think I'll let the chief speak to his thoughts about this. Um, our office has never used the product before. Um, we've heard that it's been well received in, in some stations. We've we didn't go visit, but the chief and his staff did along with Steve, um, and they had they shared a bunch of photos of the floor. Um, so our two cents worth is we would recommend that we just keep the epoxy floor in. Um, the epoxy floor is also used in other areas of the building. Um, so that would be our recommendation is to not take the alternate because, um, you know, we're just more confident in the in the epoxy floor and we don't want to finish the project and then have a problem with the flooring and ron to back you up on that i did have conversations with matt and he would prefer the epoxy floor as well ron just to clarify something there you this is the only the only place that armor tough is being considered is the the equipment base yeah it's the apparatus base apparatus. yep so, and but it, and even if we take the credit for armor tough we still have epoxy floors in other locations in the building correct yep i'd, I'd be i'm tempted to stick with the epoxy as well yeah i mean if if from what ron i mean ron basically told me what he just told you guys earlier in the week it just seems like flooring issues seem like the sort of thing that haunt a lot of projects and for forty seven thousand dollars if if vertex has never used it if Doran Whittier has never used it, I'd be, oh. I'd be really concerned about. Let's not try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's I mean, ask the chief. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing that, that the chief said look into it because he thought there might be a significant cost savings. Sure. Is yeah. there is there some other reason, chief, or like is it the best thing since sliced bread and we just don't realize it, or did, did no, we just not was, we, uh... we didn't realize the cost savings we thought we might get. No, it was it was uh, cost savings and um, the fact that it was relatively low maintenance. Where with epoxy, you know, you have to do more 
in-depth maintenance every so often than what is advertised as required. Um, and, you know, that was, that was the, that was the basis of it. And I think with it, just like the epoxy, it's going to be heavily dependent on how well it's installed or how the installers do. If it's done right, it's going to be great. If it's not, then it won't, <laughs> you know, um, the one, the one project that I did do prior to this, you know, it did work out really well. And then uh, we had in that existing station, there were some uh, floor drain issues where the floor drains backed up into the station multiple times because they were connected to the street storm drain. So anytime there was a backup or flooding, it would flood the bay. So obviously there were some issues, you know, around that um, where water infiltrated underneath uh, the adhesive that is used to adhere to the flooring system. Uh, and then there were some other areas where it appeared that the salt and uh, road treatments things on the, the perimeters on the seals around the doors, uh, the bay doors specifically were, you know, were worn or coming up. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I would like to say I, I would, I would, you know, be in favor of saving the $47,000, but at the same time, when you're talking about a project of this magnitude as well, it's, you know, if there's a tried and true method that, you know, everybody feels more comfortable with, safer with, then I'm okay with that as well. You know, I just think, you know, my only thing is we, we really go into this whole, this whole process and this whole project, you know, you know, we've been trying to find ways to save money, but accomplish the mission. And uh, that was just one of those ways. And I'm not, I'm by any means am I married to it, um, you know, but I did just want to say that on the record, it was one of those things we tried, tried to do and put on the table to, you know, potentially save some coin. And, uh, you know, if there is a method that is tried to free with the epoxy, and that's what the architect is doing him. You know, obviously I've been in many stations that had epoxy floors and they, they hold up and do what they're supposed to do. So I'm definitely, you know, okay with that. And chief, you know, I'm usually not uh, about having increased cost either. So um, in this case, you know, obviously I think we have to go with the tried and true um, for the ultimate um, long-term of your building. I'm not yes. sure. I'm not sure the risk is offset for $47,000. Yeah. No, I don't think the benefits <clears throat> outweigh the risk. You know, when we were getting, you know, information from the manufacturer, you know, of it saving $100,000 or more, then that becomes something that, okay, we really got to think hard, you know, but at 47 on a project of this magnitude, I, I, I tend to agree with you. I don't, I don't think that it's worth the potential risk and potential, you know, either delays or caustic to create the long term if it's not installed properly or there is some kind of defect. Right. Okay. So what I'm hearing, and anybody that disagrees can speak up, but I think we're not going to take alternate one, Steve. Yep, I got it. No. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? that anyone wants to have on the budget here? Well, well let, let's just clarify the, tw the. sorry, Justin, jumping in. The Go 20, we're, we're gonna try and round this off at 22.7 and Steve's gonna adjust the owner contingency as necessary to come in under that number. So. Yeah, let, let me, well, well, while you're going through the other slides, I'll, I'll stop sharing the screen. I'll, I'll, I'll adjust this, the spreadsheet and then we can return to it after that, and we can just look at, at the numbers where the, where they stand. How's that? Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna have the the um, financing fee that we still need to get updated after this. So, well, I was gonna add a little money to that just as uh, to see where it where it puts us. Sure. Okay. Yep. So I guess I'll share my screen and open up the PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, I think. Quick question going back to the actual bids themselves, just for clarification purposes, because you know I've received the bids. Um, and Steve, I hope you can help me out. Um, 
So we had to do some work on the COA, our senior center uh, earlier this year's uh, signing project. Uh, we went out to bid and so forth. A couple of bids came back. One of them didn't have a seal um, and, you know, kind of up to us whether or not we want to determine whether we want to accept that bid or reject it and things of that sort and talking with the attorney generals. And I know that this lower bid came in um, without the seal on the bid bond itself, which is, you know, could be problematic. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I, you know, just look for your verification or better understanding um, if we accept this bid, the lower bid, and that's um, not a completed item. Is there a potential that there could be a big contest coming from the other party going forward? And you know, what is what is our risk potential as a town on that aspect? And then conversely, it's a two-part question. Um, there's a DCAM certification um, requirement, and it's Castagna, Castan, Castagna, however you say the name. Castagna. Stanya. So uh, under the DCAM, they have a single project limit and we're really close to that limit of 21,751. And I'm not sure if that 21,751 includes contingencies or if that's just the straight project cost itself. Um, so those are kind of two of my concerns on the, the bids that we have received. And I just didn't know if you could address those issues for us. Yeah, the, the, the bond capacity is just on the construction. It has nothing to do with, with our contingencies. Does that have to do with site work? Pardon me? Would that include site work? Because that's not really known at this point either. Oh, the, the site work site work is included in the scope of work. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then with respect to these, the seal that was not accompanied with the bid bond, do we have risk exposure? Um, Again, I, I know. I know. Justin better. brought that up the other other day. I I am at my. I'm not going to change my answer. I don't feel that that as issue. We have the bid bond. Um, it, it's it's uh, included in the, in the bid. All the documents were included in the bid. I don't think this will uh, that that small issue would open us up to any kind of bid protests. And it, even if it did, uh, well, first off, I, I would think we we would have had uh, seen it by now. Um, but also, it's it doesn't affect. The um, the cost of the project at all, you know it it it's um, they have a term for it, but it's not a substantive error that that we can um, you know we can waive the requirement. There's there's a lot of things that can be waived. It's, it's well, I know we can waive it. My my point is, even though we waive it, are we subject for a bid protest? Is my my I guess what do we have ourselves covered? to avoid any issues for bid protest, even if we accept it. Yes, we, we, we should, there, there should be, there should be no issue. Okay. That's all. And, okay. Yeah, belts and suspenders. That's all. Yep. Sorry. Okay, so I'll, on, yeah. I'll share my screen. Um, this is the PowerPoint <clears throat> that I'll send everybody. It's 33 megabytes, Kevin. So, um, when you get it, <laughs> it's it's big. Um, so I think you reduced it because I got it. Well, I sent it as a PDF. But oh, you, it's, it's you, the PowerPoint, PowerPoint is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to send me the PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> um, so what we have here is the, you know, the cover page, right? So this will be up on the screen while everybody gets settled and so forth, and then when we start, uh, this is the first slide here. It talks about the building committee, um, the fire department that's been involved, all of the boards that have been involved, and then Mass Saves and Eversource. I, I was going to suggest maybe this should be at the end. I don't know. Um, I don't know what everybody else thinks. I was thinking that the first slide would be the introductions, but this kind of seemed like something that would be at the end to me. Okay. If everybody, I think I, well, I agree I'm, with it. Yeah, I might argue that it's nice to see how many people worked on the project. Sure. And, and along those lines, I think, you know, you kind of say, look, everybody's been involved. And then the primary folks have been the building committee. Who's giving okay. this, who's giving this presentation? So, you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, we, we can talk through that. I had some thoughts of, um, you know, the chief and, and Todd picking up a couple slides, but uh, I'm certainly fine going through 
everything outside of the, the, the few things I was going to have them touch on. But it, it certainly, you know, if you or or Justin or Justin or Chris feel that you want to present any of these slides, I'm more than happy to share some of the load. But I think most of this is what I presented at the last community meeting anyway. Yes, we tried. Can we go back to slide number two? I see one typo that we could be addressed. The um, Adam Carlson is no longer a member of our department. He went to Bellingham. Okay. And you need to add Sam Brady. Perfect. And he's a call firefighter MT. Um, but yeah, to, about the the presentation. I mean, I we'll we'll get to it, Aaron. But there's the existing condition slide, and then the cost of the taxpayer slide that I was hoping to turn over to the, the chief and and Todd respectively. That will kind of break up the talk a little bit, so it's not me up there for twenty minutes in a row. But again, we, uh, um... there's things that people want to talk about. We certainly can split it up. Have we been given a time limit? We have no time limit. As in, uh, Jay, Jay said that we can take as much time as we want. Quick question. Are we gonna, still going to do the video loop while people are coming in? Or are we just going to have that first slide up? So because we, I thought we had discussed doing that uh, video just on a continuous loop until. I had that as, a, yeah. as the next discussion item, Chief. Um, I mean, we can talk about it now. I was thinking we get through the slides. And then I know NCTV has been in contact with me just trying to find out what what we want to have shown. So I had, I wanted to talk about, you know, Justin had talked about having a handout at town meeting, and then we can talk about the video. Um, I was thinking we could talk about that after we go through the slides, but if people want to talk about it now, we can. I'm fine to talk to wait. I just wanted to, because we it had been brought up that that first yeah. slide would just be up as people got settled. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, Okay. Um, but I, as far as, again, the presentation, I mean, I, I agree with what Ron said that I think the committee presenting it is probably best. And then Ron and Steve can kind of chime in as I'm, I'm sure we'll get plenty of questions when we're done. And they can chime in to fill in the blanks or they can fill in the blanks as we're going through it. But I think it should be primarily a, a committee presentation. Um, this is on the next slide, and, and this is all, I mean, you've all seen this before, right, because we we mimicked the same presentation that we just recently gave to the community. So Fire Station Building Committee, the next slide is the lessons learned and the code requirements. So we've kind of explained, you know, lessons learned from the past, as well as what the updated code requirements are. Um, also outreach and information and distribution to the community. Um, and then the debt exclusion request is based on actual bids, not estimates. Um, the next slide. Oh, if, before you go off that slide, Ron, I had a couple comments on it. So uh, maybe I can share my screen and I can send you this markup, but just so that everybody can see what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. You all see that? Yes. Yep. So I was wondering if we should shy away from lessons learned um, only because the moderator is going to be pretty specific at the beginning of the, the meeting that he, have, he doesn't want this to turn into a referendum on the 2016 project. That maybe it's something like project goals. And we can say, you know, we had goals of outreaching to the community and this is what we did. We had a goal of, you know, coming to town meeting with a with an actual bid and not estimates and making sure it's all inclusive and kind of frame that as, you know, this is what we're trying <coughs> to achieve with this project rather than saying we're doing it because of 2016. I think we, we can address it somehow saying process because there is, I agree with you, but there is that air out there that somehow 
or that the previous project was mismanaged. And we want to make sure it's known that, hey, this went through a thorough vetting and a much better process you know, not necessarily trying to throw shade or get into a conversation or discussion, but just to demonstrate that this is not the same process. We're not, you know, we're not coming to the table with unknowns or just estimates or guesses or conjectures. We are, this is all firm and set. And there's been a lot more vetting, a true feasibility study, true design development, true schematic design, all of that stuff that, that's that been done that we know on the other side of it either wasn't done or was done and not done thoroughly and was incomplete with a lot of error, which led to the debacle we ended up with. Again, not to get in the weeds of that, but we do need to point out so that because a big hurdle for this is re-earning or establishing or gaining the trust of the citizens. Um, so, you know, but that's chief all right, that's all done that's all done with the bullet points on the yeah. screen right and kevin i think i agree with the one you've added which is the design a building that serves the immediate needs and future I, I i would posit that we just change the title to general background and then it, it we don't need to say code requirements because the next sentence says it and lessons learned i agree is a little bit incendiary so let's just change it to general background general project background or general background. I mean, it's it's a title for a slide, right? What's important is the information that's on the slide. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just thinking like, you know, if, if we're trying to honor J, what Jay is kind of trying to instill, then let's not, you know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and the intent was lessons learned during the development of the project, not lessons learned over the course of history of humankind. But yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Those two words, there's more risk inherent with using them than there is changing them and using different words. Okay. I like those. Also, third uh, bullet down, change uh, department to debt. <laughs> yep. All right, I'll send you this, Ron. I've already made the changes. Okay, perfect. Well, send it to me anyway. I'll make sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. That's it. Back All right. You, Ron. Okay. Um, so with that, Chief, we have the slide here that you know, I don't know if we want to keep these photos on here or if there's better photos, Chief, that you want to provide. Um, we did have some discussions over the holidays about, you know, possibly taking some pictures that give people a better, you know, like maybe there's a there's an interior view of this or a different view of that. And then we could replace this with something. And this really is the same photo, right, that we've talked about. Um, but it shows two things. It shows how tight the trucks are. And then it shows that you have to buy custom equipment so that the <laughs> so that the um i don't know what you call them the bumpers don't overlap and then we're showing that the existing building is literally falling apart so you know renovating this building wouldn't have been as easy as just moving in right there's structural damage to the building that's just because it's from 1966. um i i i like this slide personally i think you know most a lot of people are, are aware and um, you know it allows for conversation and if i'm and hopefully questions to be raised so i can address those things but i think the slide depicts accurately what you know highlights the, the major issues we're we're facing yeah so so chief this is actually one spot where i was thinking after i kind of go through those first couple slides to hand it to you i mean this might be a good i think some of the discussions you've had at like the last couple of community meetings even though they were in response to questions but just talking about the hazards of crossing the parking lot you know give a little bit of color to these photos the hazards that you guys face crossing the parking lot in hazardous conditions 
the fact that your gear gets wet as you're coming across and you, you're basically turning yourself into a baked potato when you fight a fire. I think if you can give a little bit of background of what these existing conditions are showing, what you guys are dealing with. I mean, personally, I think that's pretty powerful stuff for people to hear. Yeah, I agree. I've gotten, um, I've talked with, uh, with Donna and I have some highlights of when I spoke at, um, when we had the meeting at advisory and also the last uh, public meeting, you know, just highlighting some of those finer points that citizens felt like it was important to share and that were impactful. So I'll definitely be prepared with that information. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll basically pass it to you, you know, and say that you're going to kind of walk through the, the current conditions that we're trying to rectify. So, and then I, then I can pick it back up again after that. So the next slide is the same slide that we've all kind of vetted and reviewed. It's basically saying that, you know, <clears throat> the planning study that was done in 2001 resulted in 23,600 square feet. The 2015 study was 21,900. And our actual project um, is the 25,670. So I'm going to change that number to the 26,695. Um, but <clears throat> this is all remaining. Yeah, yep. we've presented that slide a bunch of times. So. Yep. Didn't we? Didn't we talk about putting the average cost per square foot on this slide? Uh, it's on um, another slide. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah, budget yeah. slide. You got on this slide. Um, so well, well, let's just go. So because the average, this is all about square footage, not necessarily cost. Um, and then this one just talks about how. You know, the design efficiencies, and I don't know who wants to talk to this, but basically, you know, we're essentially sharing spaces and using dual purpose spaces um, and doing rooms such as locker rooms, the locker alcoves, just to save square footage. And that reduced the net to gross from 30%, which is the standard to 22%. So we didn't lose program. We made it a very tight, spatially efficient building. I have two slides for the next one. So here's the one that everybody's been looking at, right? And that's uh, Ron, quickly going back on the last slide, just yep. to update, because you said approximately 26,000, whatever the number is on this number six slide, just I would just put that number there, not okay. approximately, because it is what it is right now. Yep. And then for this slide, for size comparisons, we've been looking at this slide. We've got the average cost uh, per square foot, but um, you know, Jason in the office sort of came up with this that I thought was interesting that we could say, here's Norfolk, and then here's all your all your surrounding towns, which have either already have more square footage or they're planning more square footage than what Norfolk will have. Um, and again, that's 26, 670. Let me just fix that. Um, Zero. Know. There you go. It's yeah. gone. <laughs> Uh, I thought this was a really good slide, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, saw. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's a much better, it's a much more easily digestible representation of the information on the previous slide. Yeah. I, so, I, I just want to make sure when we're presenting it, like, I mean, Medway's planning. So did we find out the square footage that they're looking at? Yeah, we know it's yeah, over 30,000 square just, just throw it. No, no, no. Right these, are, these are real numbers. Yeah, okay. So we know that Medway is looking at over 30,000 square feet when they're done. And then these other communities are already over 30,000 square feet and Franklin and Walpole will be beyond 40,000 square feet when they're done. Yep. So, you know, I thought it was a great representation graphically. And then we've got the cost per square foot, whereas everybody else is using, you know, they're in, they're a few bucks more a square foot. Um, so, we're, so are we keeping this slide and the previous slide then, or we no, were just previous slide goes away. What does the title mean? Apples to oranges. Well, because it sounds like why are we even bothering to compare? <laughs> well, the, the point is, you know, every project is different. And, you know, the one thing that we're doing here in Norfolk, you know, if we consider everybody else an orange, we're an apple. You know, there are things that are specific to Norfolk that just all these other communities, you know, aren't doing. Like you've made a decision to have one station. You've made a decision to have... You know the green belt, the pitched roofs, uh -huh. things like would, that. 
So that, it, that, re that requires too much explanation. I think I would remove that from the title. Yeah, and just have it as a size comparison. Perfect. I and mean, that's what we're trying to show. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If we want to, if we want to say those other things, we can say them. But I wouldn't right. invite that. And I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so let's just be clear. We're removing the previous slide and going with the graphic slide. All right. So let's just look at the previous slide again, real quick. So what are we losing? We're not losing anything, I don't think. Yeah, the, the only, the only thing anything. that I had, yeah, that I had kind of talked about when we presented this slide to advisory and at the community center was like a couple of the towns that, you know, they had they had passed a debt exclusion before the before the project was bid, and then the bid came back considerably higher and they have to go through VE. And I was kind of using that to say, hey, that's part of the reason why we wanted to have the bid in hand when we came to bid is that. Yeah, but we, we could add that to the graphic, right? I guess that's what I'm getting at. Like maybe right. underneath the line, we could say, you know, was bid, before, I don't know. I think was, that appro was approved before it was bid or something. Yeah, I think, you know, basically, you know, if you're going to say, you know, I think it's a strong message, but I think that wants to get said here. Yeah, I could. Your project I could, I could. Goal. You right. know, I could I could mention that previous town projects, That's Norfolk and in other locations, you know, this is what they've done. And we tried to avoid that here. Yeah. Yep. You could say that with a line that says we're we're coming with the bids in hand. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hope you're taking notes, Kevin. It's all, okay. it's all up here. <laughs> um, so the next thing is the updated spreadsheet when I get it from. Um, we'll update this uh, when that's sent over from Steve. Uh, these are Todd's slides. It's the annual tax increase. Right. I'll update those once I get the yep. finalized numbers. Then it's the debt exclusion proposed tax bill. And Todd, you're going to speak to those slides at the meeting? Yeah. So, so I again. get paid for my performances. So <laughs> do I charge that directly or how do I know? <laughs> okay. Sure, just make sure it gets, makes its way into that spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah, so Todd, I was going to hand it over to you for these two slides, just to kind of take a sip of water. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. And then we've got the same slides that we've shared before. We've got the committee and the study schedule. So this is all the work that the committee did between March 2021 and December 2021 to put together the committee and the schedule and so forth. And then we have the design bidding and voting schedule, which gets us from January 2022 to where we are today. And then all things going according to plan. When the vote passes, we have a three phase construction project. And here are the major milestones. Um, and so, you know, people will be able to see work start on site April 15th and be completed October 30th, 2024. Um, I'm, I'm going to get nitpicky on you here. Just okay. Think. I'm sorry, Ron. The graphic repeating. I, I I feel like it would be awesome if the the graphic on the last the third of three slides was like the rendering, sort of showing the end product. Okay. Whereas like and the previous slide I don't know was maybe a a, a planning plan and then I don't even know what I, you know. Th so the graphic is somewhat representative of the content of the schedule. Does that make sense? Sure, we can do that. I'll send something along. You guys can take a look at it. I mean, the first one could even be existing conditions or something yeah, where we're talking yeah. about the planning yeah. phase. Existing conditions, the plan, and then the rendering. Yeah, okay. so, yeah something like that. <clears throat> and then we have the renderings <clears throat> that have been shared uh, multiple times. You know, we got the the roof area for the solar, both in the front and the back of the building. Um, and you can see how we've provided the requirement, but also saved money on the flat roof that will accommodate the solar. And then we've got the front of the building um, and then the side of the building. And we'll make sure that this gets done so that it matches this color. Um, and then that's it. We say thank you. Oh, I see um, some ap apples and oranges there. Yeah, we're going to, we, all, <laughs> all those are hidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They go down like this. Um, so this is the last slide and, you know, so basically we've got 19 slides and I'm kind of thinking that that would be easy enough to get through in 15 or 20 minutes. So okay. if you figured a minute a slide, 
you're at 20 minutes. Um, so I don't know, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm totally fine going through the slides other than the ones that I think the chief and Todd can do, and it might help the kind of presentation flow up a little bit better, but, you know, Aaron, Justin, Justin, Chris, if you guys have something that you want to present, certainly speak up if there's something you want to show. Um, you know, Justin, you know, like that what you talked about at the advisory board meeting, I think is great too, because that's your perspective in response to, you know, you don't work for the town, but you, at your perspective as a firefighter, I just don't know if, if you want to talk about it during existing conditions or we just wait for somebody to ask about it and then you can kind of talk about it a little bit. But I think maybe better off for existing conditions because he actually works there. But if if someone needs like a more elaborate discussion or maybe like a, a viewpoint from another community, I guess I could speak up on that. Yeah. No, I wasn't thinking you present the slide alone, but I, I didn't know if you want to add anything or or maybe, you know, chime in at all but I, I mean i think we can also wait until we're getting questions that it might come up okay i think it's good i think it's really good okay um so we'll clean this up i'll send you the powerpoint kevin and then you can just mess with it if you want before the meeting yeah what i'll do is um when you send it to me i'll well, I guess I should say first, does anybody else have any comments on the slides before we move on? Is everybody good with them? Um, I'm, I'm fine with them. Yeah. When So when you send them to me, Ron, I'm, I'm going to go through them. I kind of jot down some notes of what I'll talk about for each one. I kind of already have already done that because some of the slides are ones we presented before. But if I have any comments when I go through that, or if I notice anything, I'll let you know. So. Okay, thank you. Can I send you my markup, even though you said you already did it? Kevin, are you seeing my uh, uh, budget sheet? The X, is yeah, that on the screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay. This is this is the Excel. So, <clears throat> do we want to we want to get back into this quick while? Yes. So fresh. Yep. So what I've done is is I've essentially um, adjusted the the far right column <clears throat> to what we discussed and I've highlighted the, the corrections. Here's the OPM uh, less $26,000. Um, there's the financing costs. Todd, I, I added 30 to it. I don't know what your feeling is on that. I, I know you are, you know, more is better, I'm sure for, for, uh, from your viewpoint. Triple so, <laughs> so we sort of, we sort of traded numbers there. Um, then if I go down, skip this, go back to um, the architectural fees, I did, I did put back in the $15,000 and uh, there's a little bit of difference. And, and don't forget, I, I added, I added uh, $5,000 for reimbursables because we've, we've already paid some. So that's the number and that's sort of the, the formula. These, these are right off of the, uh, off of the, um, the contract. So that's the change for Dorn Whittier. Uh, scrolling down now, all of these we, we didn't really uh, make changes to. Um, the, the soft cost contingency <clears throat> changed a little bit only because it's based on a percentage. And we did uh, touch a few numbers up above. Then, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, I deleted the alternate one, which was the forty seven thousand dollar credit, and um, I was, you know, we were we were sort of shooting for this twenty two seven uh, number. It was a little lower than that, so I was at it. I was able to revise this owner contingency from one percent to one and a half percent, which raised this number a little bit um, from. Uh, we were at like 201,000 uh, to 302. So um, we, came, we came for a, um, uh, a town meeting ask of 22,692. So I said, say 227. I would, I would make the contingency, just break the contingency from the 1.5% and make it the number that makes the final number 27 Even, or 227. I, yeah, yeah, I can do that.
423. <laughs> All right, everyone good with this? Yep. I was asking committee members, Ron, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ron's good with it. Go. I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> say, I'll say the same. I'll go with Ron. All right. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll send that around so everybody has the the, the exact numbers then. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, next discussion item is discuss handout information and video to be provided at January 11th special town meeting. So those were things that have that we've discussed at past town meetings or uh, pass um, committee meetings. Um, one to have, Justin, I think you said a, a one page handout maybe. Yeah, I, I would keep it one page. I don't know if the, the committee wants to add anything else, but the slide that Todd, one of the slides that Todd has created, which is the various assessed values, I really think that's really important. I think when I see that slide, I think for people we've spoken to, that's really important. So I, I'd probably put that as a page, and I don't know if we want to do one page with some FAQs just so people have it, but I, I, at the minimum, I think Todd's slide with the different assessed values we should have as a handout. That's easy to pronounce. Yeah, the, the FAQs, I I like the idea. I just don't know if we're going to be able to pick only a couple. I'd, I'd almost, re you know, I guess we could look through them if, if people want to right now. But what's the word file? I mean, the word file is only two pages, I think, right? Ron, uh, do you remember? It's, no, it's longer than I think it's longer like five than pages. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't know how it's displayed right now, but the word file that we had as the working draft, I think it was two pages, two and a half, maybe three. Wow. Well, that's, so that's one and a I half think, printed double sided. I think printing the FAQs is a good idea. Yeah, I think I also want to mention that I think Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but the ones that you sent to us weren't all the questions. They were the ones you needed some help on from Steve and I, correct? Yeah, that's uh, why. No, I think it was a complete document. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's just uh, I did highlight the ones that I needed. I don't know, even if it's six pages, it's still worth printing. Well, I mean, how many are we yeah, printing costs? We're going to have to add that to the budget. No, I and mean, we'll, we'll, we'll add it here, but I, I don't think having, it's, you know, very multiple pages uh, is helpful at that point. Here's, um, I can share my screen again. Are we going to have the boards there? Maybe we could have the FA. No. no. So this is five pages. I, mean, I think that's kind of a lot to print out, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't really think the FAQ is worthwhile having there. I think the one page of the slide is more than sufficient. People are going to ask the questions they want to ask, whether they read them or not. They're still going to ask for a clarification or ask them. Well, I, would, I was thinking maybe we have the project, even though we're going to display the project cost, have the project cost is like one side and then the cost of the taxpayer on the other. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. Main, that's the main question, the main thing everybody wants. You can use the two slides that have already generated, which gives the summary of the total cost on one side, and then it gives the allocation uh, for the various <laughs> assessments. Yeah. And make right. sure you put Todd's name on the bottom of the assessment yeah. slide. So. I'll take a reduced fee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, I like that. I, I agree. I think the questions are going to get asked whether they're printed and whether people read them or not. They're going to ask them again anyway. The questions are all going to come out regardless of whether we give them printed or answers anyway. They're going to ask. Um, so I think the, 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 the big ask, which everybody wants to know, and to me, I think that's very transparent as well. You walk in the door and you have, hey, this is, this is the ask. You know, here's a breakdown of what it is. What you know, what it is based on various assessments, so they already know, you know, um, and then you can answer the questions and kind of fill in those blanks uh, and clarifying questions as they come up. So one one double sided page project cost and then cost to taxpayer, Justin. So I think sounds good to me. Sounds um, like agreement, everybody. 
Anybody not okay with that? Getting some thumbs up. Sound good. Now, what about um, any sort of media that we want to have? I know, again, NCTV's kind of reached out that they have some documentation we can show. Um, Chief, is there anything specific you had in mind? Um, I believe Donna had, she's still on. I believe she had, um, you know, uh, I think she had a, a shorter video that we could play on a loop. Um, I think that 15 minute version that gives a lot of information, kind of answers some of the FAQs, talks about some of the process. Um, again, just as a, you know, playing, as everybody's strolling the conversation or whatever, just have it there and, you know, playing in the background on the big screen um, until we kind of get ready to, to start. And as we get started, have that first slide up and queue it up. Yeah, I guess I, I wasn't considering, and we can discuss if people think it's a good idea, I wasn't considering showing a video while we, during the presentation, this was more when people are coming in and sitting down, right? Yeah, that's what I mean, just as on a continuous loop until we actually start the official meeting. So as people are coming in, grabbing their seat or whatever, it's just something they can look up at, grab their attention, you know, just kind of focusing on the project. And then uh, when the meeting starts, when the moderator gives his warning, we're going to start, it stops and the first slide of the presentation is up here and queued up and ready to go and that's it. This, you're talking about the existing conditions video that's on the website right now, on the town website? The one that you made a while ago, right? Um, no, it was actually the one that um, me, you, and uh, Aaron did that edited down that covers, you know, existing conditions, but also covers the process, you know, uh, from kind of start to finish. So it also has 126 it. views on YouTube. So. We didn't split it up, so we <laughs> nobody's feelings are hurt. So we don't know which <laughs> one they're watching. Yeah, that that's fine too. I mean, I couldn't remember. Did did we go through existing conditions on that one? I, think I didn't we think did we on. did. Yes, I think we did. Miss Don, are you still on? If she's still on, maybe she can speak to that. If that's okay with the group, because um, I know she's done some editing and producing in that. You know, sure. Yes, I am still on. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, the July version was just existing conditions. Um, you know, 13 minutes. And then the November version was the whole gamut that covered less existing conditions. You'd, you'd only see bumper to bumper for a quick second. And you're seeing many more images that aren't necessarily focusing on existing conditions if you go with the November version. So I'm, I'm open to either. Um, if you're running the July version with the sound down, we could be add a graphic to say, I'm pointing out bumper to bumper. I'm pointing out the decontamination de washer is too close to the decant the thin thing that's contaminating it. Did we basically run the existing conditions one with closed captioning on? Thank you for summarizing what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, I didn't know when you were saying it, Donna, if you meant you would be typing that in, but I think Justin's got a good point. If you can run it. Type it in before the meeting so that the, the version of the file given to the computer in the room has the closed captions. Yeah. We decide to play that video, and that's what I was going to recommend because one, we also have to keep in mind these videos, 13 minutes. This one that I'm looking at that I assume is the July one's 13 minutes. You know, you're if you were running a loop, if you wanted two times, it's 26 minutes. And most people are not there for 26 minutes. I think we could just play the NCTV video, put CC uh closed captioning on it, and it's pretty simple there and just have it running before town meeting goes. And then when we're ready to go, we take it off and get into the presentation. Nice and simple. The existing conditions video one, not, yeah. the, not the full project information one. Yeah, I guess that was kind of my gut was that the we're going to kind of give everybody the, the full project information during the presentation. 
that the existing conditions might be a little more powerful to, I mean, you're going to talk about it, Chief, but I think seeing it might be a little better. Yeah. So, so does that make sense? So we'll have that playing kind of before the presentation starts. We'll end it and then start the slideshow. I'll also offer that if you are watching it and you are listening to it, it takes 13 minutes, but you can play it at a faster speed. So no one's going to be done. No one's going to probably be manning that. You know, they have like a, a, a group there that I'm sure we'll, we'll get there in advance and we'll make sure it's set up and we'll just run it. We'll just let it run, especially yeah, if I conditions I, I i don't think it's necessarily important to for someone to watch the video end to end i mean we're going to talk about that stuff i think it's just something that's going on yeah while people are filtering in so i, I think normal speed's fine um i'm assuming we can have the bo the boards up in the lobby chief or you have them in the station because um, Jay said we could put, Jay Tellerman said we could put whatever we want in the lobby when people are coming in. So if we've got it already printed, we might as well have it up. Okay. Anything else anybody thinks we should have besides the handout and the video playing in the boards? Cookies, definitely have cookies. <laughs> I don't know who's going to make those, but. Or we'll have to draw straws, maybe. Um, so the town meeting is at seven o'clock, right, Justin? Yes. Um, seven p.m. Yes. Yep. <coughs> Do we want to meet beforehand at all? I mean, it, it, is there anywhere that we can kind of congregate beforehand, Justin, or we just say, "Hey, let's meet there." 6 30 we'll go up on stage we kind of have everything already ironed out i can look um if we can get another room so what typically happens for a special town meeting generally speaking uh the board has a select board meeting so they'll have a select board meeting before uh an advisory has a scheduled meeting before so right. yep. you know i don't know if they'll yeah. want you know you to present that final figure to them before or anything like that. So you, you might be there in advance for the advisory committee meeting because they do have something scheduled already for that. You might want to give them a heads up of that meeting, but we can find the logistics of finding a room, another spare room if committee members want to meet there. And I'll follow up on that one. So answer your question, Kevin. Yeah, I guess what does everybody think? Do you okay showing up early to kind of talk about I, I don't know if, even know if there's anything left to talk about i mean i'll probably be there just kind of working through the slides at least beforehand and if advisory wants to talk we can but um yeah i don't I, know how, how early we're supposed to show up at this thing <laughs> <laughs> i'm fine being there a little bit early I, I think it would be a good idea just in case there's any last minute things that need to get ironed out yeah, and it seemed like the advisory board was pretty clear that they wanted us, or someone anyway, to be there to discuss the final number when that time ar arrived. Yep, happened. So that was the only thing I was going to say. At least you should have one representative for there because this figure is different. And you want to? They have a committee meeting scheduled, so I would yep. let them know. Yeah, I, I'm going to plan to get there at six, Justin. Maybe you can see if there's somewhere that if other committee members show up early and we want somewhere to kind of or. Ron and Steve, if they show up early and we just want to run through the slides, that there's somewhere that we can be. Yeah, yeah I'll look I, plan to, I plan to be there at six to get the boards and stuff set up. So, and, and maybe um, just, yeah, just send an email out, Justin, if there is somewhere that we can can go or if we should just meet in the lobby. Yeah. I do know that the um, my union uh, personnel are planning on being there to answer questions early as well. Um, and they may have, I'm not sure. I know they sent out a mailer. Most of you, if not all of you, have gotten it. Um, I know Ron knows what it looks like because, you know, but uh, most, if you're a Norfolk citizen, I think you got it. Um, it just has some pictures and information on it as well. Um, 
but I know they wanted to be there just to, you know, answer questions or to greet people as they came in, you know. Um, so and I know they'll be present if, you know, uh, we may even be able to have them help hand out the, you know, or man the table with the, the you know, budget sheet on it that we we're talking about. Um, I know they want to have a presence there. They want to be active and engaged with the citizens as they go in or if they have questions beforehand or, you know, want to hear some of their perspective and what their input was and those kind of things. Um, you know, they want to make sure to have, you know, a presence there. I just want to make sure that's okay too. I want to be able to give them a, you know, um, be okay or the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down, you know, based on what is considered to be, you know, ethical and legal from the standpoint of, you know, the town meeting. So chief, at, at town meeting, there's a little more latitude. Than what do. So that postcard that they sent, um, and I'm going to double check and confirm with Jay that he's okay with this, but they could be there and have their little postcard if they like that, that that's um, acceptable. I wouldn't have them man the table in terms of the budget sheets. I mean, you have to check in with the town clerk and stuff. So we'll leave that they kind of separate that, but of course they can be present and, you know, advocating for that, that project in that sense. So that shouldn't be an issue, but not okay. like in terms of budget sheets and stuff like that. We just okay. do what we take. Okay. Any other discussion items anybody has? We've got two two action items. There's a question. There's a comment. Yeah, there's a comment question. Yeah, I would just ask if someone has a question, just raise their hand and then ask it so that it's recorded. And if uh, if Paul can't read it, I'll just read it. Just to make simple, hello, is there any plan to have the firefighters in the room during the actual vote? Many have spoken to have expressed concern about the appropriateness of such a measure. Thank you. Um, so uh, town meeting, generally, you're allowed to have guests at a town meeting. Um, this is in many communities you can have, you know, advocates. Uh, there are, I believe in how we do it in Norfolk, though, there is a separate seating area for people that aren't uh, residents or who aren't voting members. So if they aren't a resident or something, they would probably be in that area. I have spoken with Carol about this as well because we're anticipating more people. Uh, there's gonna be an extra checker in there to make sure that we're that we're uh, doing that process uh, for this special town meeting as well, so. Um, and I think the, uh, the, uh, the other piece of that is that the majority of my department are actually town residents and registered <laughs> voters. So they have, I mean, they, they have a right to be present and to, to vote. So, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and just, <clears throat> Justin, if, if you could, uh, whoever's doing the checking in, if, if you could give them Ron and my name, because we will need to uh, presumably be, be down there with the, with the rest of the committee during the yeah. presentation, as opposed to being sitting somewhere else. Yeah, no, that, that won't be an issue. We'll be prepared for that. Okay, thanks. Yep. Donna, do you have a question regarding the town meeting? The, uh, the perception, I understand each department at a town meeting is asking for something and they want to know the result. Did I get what I requested? When police officers stand at the back very authority that could appear as high authority it's like well, why are they here are they trying to persuade my vote but i think if you look at if the school people are there if the library people are there they don't seem as intimidating to why are they in the room um, might be the perception of firefighters come at the back of the room during the vote. Yeah. Just a perception. Okay. Paul. Yeah, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think the 
I I don't want them, you know, and I'll express this to my union. I don't want them like coming in a room just for the vote and standing up in the back. I just want them to be able to be present and engaged, especially, I think it's 10, over 10 of my personnel are town residents. So they're going to be, you know, they are amongst the audience anyway, but even the others that aren't, you know, they, they're, you know, just like Justin said, they, they can be guests and in the guest section, you know, not standing up, not trying to persuade or anything like that, but just being present. Ready for a motion to adjourn, Kevin? Yeah, hi, gentlemen. I'm sorry, I raised my hand. I just wanted to say I was having audio problems. Uh, am I coming through okay? Yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess to build on that point, you know, maybe some of you weren't around for the police station, fire station vote before, but what ended up happening was all of the police were in the waiting room outside. And then when it came time for the vote, um, you know, they all stood at the back in full uniform. It had a feeling of being very manipulative uh, as the townspeople were being looked upon. So I didn't know if that was the same plan. Obviously, if the firefighters are residents of the town, then they should be present, you know, in the vote. They have a right to be there. But if the same plan was to ring the back of the room beyond the scope of the cameras, almost being watched over, you know, for the people as they took their vote, you know, my comment is basically that's a, that's a real manipulative type tactic. And my hope is that that wouldn't be the plan for this. Thanks, Paul. I think I think the chief has, has answered that. Um, so I, I don't certainly don't think that's the intent. But I think what Paul was saying is he actually didn't hear the answer. So just to oh, reiterate, okay. just to reiterate, Paul, I think what the chief said is he's got 10 folks on staff who will just be in the crowd. There's no- Yeah, being in the crowd is a completely yeah. different atmosphere no than ringing the back of the room. Right. That's a good point. So well taken. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we do have two action items. Um, they should be relatively straightforward. Um, so first action item is to, um, it's gonna be a, a motion to, to review and, and vote to authorize the town administrator to award the contract um, on February 3rd. So um, I should just, I should read the action item and then ask for a motion, correct? Justin? Yeah, all right. So I'll ask for a motion to review and vote to authorize the town administrator to award the contract to the low bidder no later than February 3rd, 2023 for the base bid amount and possibly alternate number one contingent upon a favorable vote at special town meeting on January 11th, 2023, and a passing town election ballot vote on January 28th, 2023. Friendly amendment to change uh, possibly alternate number one since we did scratch that. I thought so of moved. that as I was reading it. <laughs> so moved with the amended amendment. Okay. I have a second. second. Okay. I'll take a roll call vote since we're remote. Aaron Hunt. Aye. Justin Casanova Davis. Aye. Aaron Chief Kinney. Aye. Todd Lindmark. Yes. Chris Baker. Aye. Justin Yanosik. Aye. Kevin Champagne. Aye. Okay. The motion passes. Final action item is uh, approval of the meeting minutes. So, Chris, do you have any minutes to I, approve? I don't believe there are any minutes to approve right now. I haven't seen any since our last meeting. Okay. So, we'll postpone that action item. Actually, that's a Kevin. You know what? Um, actually, you'll move. Never mind, because we likely will have still committee meetings after that. So I was thinking about having scheduling a meeting right before that special town meeting as well, but I don't think that's necessary. Never mind. To Sorry. approve minutes or for something else? Yeah, but we should have more. Com no, to approve minutes. Yeah, the, like yeah, the, the committee's not disbanding. We're going to continue through construction, so we'll be around. <clears throat> Um, Aaron, was that a motion? Motion to adjourn. Do I need, do I need to make a motion for it? <laughs> to postpone it? No, to adjourn. No, no to adjourn. Oh, yeah, well, I was going to get to that, but I thought there were minutes. <laughs> I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. Thanks, Aaron everybody. <laughs> All right, aye. see you, Ron. Aye. Aaron aye. <laughs> everybody votes aye. 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 All right. Aye. Justin, aye. Justin. aye.
Aye. All right. Everyone votes aye. You all lit up. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone.